Hello, my name is Rob Laubach, instructor at the Soma Institute, the School for Clinical Massage Therapy in downtown Chicago. Today's video is going to focus on the use of fascial work and dry work. It's important to use these techniques as a way to assess the client's tissue, see if there are restrictions that are preventing fluid movements from occurring. It's also a nice way to warm the body up and it's a nice way to prep it and get the body ready for using lotion for the deeper, more specific work like trigger point that will follow your dry work. After performing your stroking and your compressions to initially introduce your touch and warm up the body, after undraping the back, I'm going to start with some dry work. And this technique is called C bowing. As you can see, the best way to perform this technique is to move very slowly. Any type of dry work or fascial work really needs to be done in a very methodical, slow manner. So you will notice that what I do to perform this technique is I kind of make a diamond shape with my hands. I pull the tissue towards me with my fingers and then I curl the tissue around, kind of forming a C shape, thus C bowing. I push my thumbs out away from my body, and I'm picking up the tissue and moving it very slowly away from my body. Again, you'll want to perform this technique very slowly, and you'll want to pick up as much tissue as possible. If you only pick up a small amount of tissue, the client will probably comment to you that it feels sort of pinchy. The next technique that I'm going to use, primarily for the upper traps, right next to the cervical region. This is a great way to um, warm up a, a particular area. You'll notice that I grasp the tissue, not with my thumb this time, but I'm grasping it between my fingers and my palm and pushing the tissue down towards the floor. Again, I can also bring this C-bowing technique into the trap area as well. All I'm doing is picking up the traps, fingers are on the front of the body, my thumbs are on the back of the body, and moving slowly. The next technique is kind of a push and pull technique. So with my left hand, I've grasped onto the upper traps and I'm pulling my hand up towards me towards the ceiling while my right hand pushes very slowly away from me. So I'm creating a very nice slow stretching primarily of that upper shoulder and back, upper and middle traps. It's a nice way to really elongate that. You're looking at my body mechanics now. You'll notice again that I'm in a nice lunge. My forearms and elbows are straight. My arms are about 45 to 60 degrees away from my torso. And all I have to do is simply lean in with my body weight as my front right leg bends. I'm not pushing with my shoulder at all. The next technique that I'm showing you is called skin rolling. So basically you start the technique very much like sea bowing, but as you can see, I start to travel a further distance. I'm feeding the tissue into my thumbs with my fingers. So again, you do want to pick up the tissue very slowly and as much tissue as possible and just push your fingers out away from your body. This is a great way to assess the tissue, see where there might be adhesions or restrictions. Again, a very nice way to warm up the tissue. You'll notice that his skin is starting to turn kind of a pink or red color. That's good. That's hyperemia. That means uh, there's a little bit of blood flow coming into the area. This next technique for the lower back is, again, kind of a push and pull technique. So I take my right hand and I come very confidently underneath his ASIS. I pull up on the hip and my left palm, I kind of start right on longissimus, kind of right next to the spine, 
and I very slowly start to push my left hand down the low back as my right hand lets the body go towards the table. So again, I lift up and I start to push very slowly with that left hand. And I can work up the back here as well. I'll probably take this up about halfway, maybe right under the scapula. For Terry's major and for lats, a very nice fascial technique is called pin and stretch. So what I've done has what I've done is taken the client's arm off the side of the table. I pin with my palm. I pin the tissue, mainly teres major and lats. I start to very slowly push my palm down the side of the body as I bring their arm up towards their head. So it's a nice way to pin the tissue and then start to bring that arm forward and it really opens up and elongates that tissue. You can, of course, address these muscles later in the treatment with lotion and get more specific. This is just a nice way to start to warm them up with some dry and fascial work. On the back of the neck, obviously there's a lot of tension that can be held in the cervical area. So I'm doing skin rolling on the back of the neck or the posterior neck. So I pick the tissue up, I use my thumbs kind of like a plow and I'm just plowing through that tissue as I feed it with my fingers. Again, please make sure that you move nice and slow through this area, but this is a great way to warm up the neck. It's turning kind of a bright red as you can notice Again, really warming that up. I can also pick the tissue up in both hands and just move it sort of back and forth very, very, very slowly. It's kind of almost like an S technique. One hand pushes forward as the other hand pulls back. A very nice technique to use for the lumbar region is kind of a fascial spreading. So you'll see the technique momentarily up close, but what I'm doing is showing you my body mechanics. My right hand is holding the client's hip down, and my left hand is slowly pushing up in the low back. So I'm in a nice lunge and my weight's on my back leg. And I can continue up the low back as well. So as you can see now with the kind of close-up shot, my right hand has come across my body and it's holding the hip down. And my left hand is slowly pushing the tissue apart. So the client is going to feel kind of a stretching and opening of the low back. It feels very, very nice. And what you'll notice is my right leg is out in front of me and bent and all my weight is on my back left leg. You'll also want to keep that hand that's pushing up, you'll want to keep that forearm as straight as possible so that it's more you using your body weight and not so much your arm strength. But again, move very, very slowly. So that was some dry work and fascial work for the back. Let's move on to the posterior leg. So after stroking and compressions to introduce your touch into the posterior leg, I'll do some kind of dry work here as well. So I've crossed my hands one over the other. My palms are close together, and I basically am just using my body weight. So I'll push into the tissue, and slowly one hand will move medially and one hand will move laterally. Again the idea here is that you're just simply opening and spreading up the tissue, warming it up and getting it ready for the work that you're going to do probably with lotion, your effleurage and petrissage techniques. Here again is another way to use pin and stretch. So I've flexed the knee, which has shortened the hamstrings. And using a loose fist, I slowly push my loose fist 
proximally up the thigh as I bring the lower leg down. So it's shortening the muscle, pinning it, and then letting it lengthen. Very nice way to elongate the hamstrings and warm them up as well. The idea, again, is making sure that that loose fist is moving very slowly and that it is, in fact, moving. So I am moving proximally towards the client's torso. After that, I can use C-bowing again, just like I used in the back and in the back of the neck. I can pick the tissue up here as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind is I'm showing you numerous techniques in the back, a variety of techniques on the posterior leg. You do not have to use all of them. You can use a couple of them. Just mix it up. Use the techniques that you feel would be most beneficial and that you are more successful in using. This last technique is I'm grasping the medial side of the thigh not with my thumb but with my palm and my fingers and I grasp it and just slowly put my body weight in and slide down towards the table. Let's move down to the calf now to gastrocnemius and soleus. This technique basically is just picking up. I'm just grasping all of the tissue slowly and as much of it as I can and lifting it towards the ceiling. I start to move distally down towards the Achilles tendon. And then don't forget about working into that tendon as well. You can do some really nice work into that tendon that will hopefully start to relax the two muscles there in the, uh, in the calf. So I'm doing that kind of S technique. I did that S technique on the uh, Achilles tendon. Just do it nice and slow and hold it. You'll notice that I can do C bowing here as well. So I make that diamond shape, lift the tissue up, push my thumbs across the calf, and for good body mechanics, you'll definitely want to make sure that your thumbs, once they start to move away from you, your thumbnails are pointing at each other. You want your thumbs to basically be an extension of your radius. And that way you'll get some nice pressure with it as well. Pin and stretch again. The calf muscles, gastrocnemius and soleus, are plantar flexors. So what I'm doing with this technique is I am plantar flexing the foot. I start to push down the calf, and while I do that, I passively dorsiflex the client's ankle. Just moving very slowly down that calf, plantar flex, pin the muscle, move down the calf while you passively dorsiflex the ankle. Really nice way to warm up those uh, two important calf muscles, gastrocnemius and soleus. Last technique that I can use here is again that technique that I grasp with my palm and my fingers. I just basically hook onto the side of the muscle, squeeze it, no thumb, and just use my body weight as I push it down towards the table. And you can work your way down the calf as well. Let's move on to the anterior leg now. This is a great fascial technique. I've placed one hand under the posterior thigh and one hand on top. I start to push the hand on top across as I pull the hand underneath towards me. I move the tissue until it stops and then I start to add more pressure and I let that top hand slowly move medially across the thigh. So you'll notice I start, I push the tissue until my hand stops and then I continue and that starts to create sort of a pulling and stretching right around those quadricep muscles. 
It's also a little bit internally rotating the hip as well. So there's a little bit of joint movement going on too. I can address the entire thigh, so don't just stay in one, one place. Move proximally or move distally. Quadriceps are big muscles, so you can really do a lot of work into the quadriceps. Very nice way to, to warm this area up. Again, just move slowly. Take all the slack out of the tissue first, and then continue to push the upper hand across the thigh. Sea bowing, again, works very well here, too. Usually, quads can be relatively hypertonic on a lot of your clients. Moving slowly, deliberately, and picking up as much tissue as you can in your grasp will make the technique not feel pinchy and not uh, feel uncomfortable. And I'll do sea bowing all across that anterior thigh as well right around the uh, patella, just proximal to the patella. You can really sink your fingers through that area as well. Again, all of those quads come through that area and insert onto the tibial tuberosity, so that's a great area to focus on. I can do a fascial spreading technique here as well. So, on this side of the client's body, my right hand crosses in front of me, and I'm holding the ASIS down, kind of pushing the ASIS towards the head and slowly allowing my left hand to slide distally down the anterior thigh. And the idea is really holding that ASIS in place and using fascial spreading to really elongate and open up the quadricep muscles here. And it's not really any finger pressure. It is really, my fingers are relaxed, but it's mainly all pressure from my palms, from the pads of my palms that's actually pushing. You don't want to dig your fingers in there, but you don't want your fingers to be um, hyperextended either. And as you can see, I've worked my way down the thigh very slowly. Let's move up now to the arm. So if I want to start warming up the deltoid muscles, I'll also be getting probably a little bit of uh, triceps here as well. But what I've done is I have brought the client's arm over their chest. I place my hand about halfway down the length of the uh, arm and I slowly push my hand on the shoulder towards the table and I bring the client's arm across their body. Great way to, um, to warm up delts. I would really encourage you in your arm work to do some fascial work like that. Anterior deltoid, remember anterior deltoid is an important shoulder flexor, internal rotator. So make sure if you see things like that in your posture analysis like shoulder internal rotation, focus on anterior delt as well. So I'm using that grasp of my fingers and my palm and just push the tissue towards the table nice way to get that anterior delt addressed. And as I work distally down the arm, I just kind of grasp around the arm, use my pads of my palms, push in with my body weight, and just let my palms slowly spread the tissue open. Notice how I stepped back a little bit each time. I'm still in a very nice lunge. My arms are straight. I'm not using any upper body strength. I'm just using my body weight. My front knee will slightly bend as I use my body weight pushing into the table. Using that grasp again with my palm and my fingers, I just grab onto, in this case, the extensors 
and just push and warm them up as I push towards the table. You can also externally rotate the shoulder and get with this same technique with the inside hand, the flexors as well. For fascial work into the wrist, if you do have a client, especially that you might suspect has carpal tunnel syndrome, this fascial work would be a very important technique to incorporate into that treatment. I can address both the anterior and posterior sides of the wrist. So in this particular moment, I start the client's wrist in extension and I pin the tissue on that side. I push it towards the table and I ask my client to actively flex their wrist. So it's again a nice pin and stretch technique. To address the other side, I will start the client's wrist in flexion, pin that tissue down on the uh, anterior forearm, and ask the client to actively extend their wrist. So you can see I'm really getting a nice kind of pull into that wrist. Nice way to open up the wrist a little bit, warm it up. Now you can have the client do this actively, like I'm doing, or you can move their wrist passively as well. So we're making our way up to the um, upper back, the neck, and we're going to address the pecs as well. So to start warming up the neck in your cervical treatment, I'm using a nice pincer grasp. I'm moving very slowly. But I go in and I grasp as much of the tissue as I can. Fingers are underneath, thumbs are on the top. Give a nice grasp and just lean back with your body. You don't want to keep pulling because you'll eventually just have skin. You only want to pull as long as you've got the trap tissue in your, uh, in your fingers. What I just performed was sort of a rope pulling technique. I just showed it over the client's head so you could see what I was doing. You just imagine a, a raft at the client's feet and alternating. Notice how my fingers come out. I squeeze with my thumb and fingers. I start low down on the neck and I just simply lean back and drag my hand up the back of their neck and then pull my hand out to the side. Here's another good example of pin and stretch. I'm primarily using my thumb in this technique, addressing scalenes in particular. So I pin the scalenes down, and then I slowly, laterally flex the client's head and neck to the opposite side. So I shorten the scalenes, pin with my thumb, and pull the client's head across the table. Really good way to warm up those scalene muscles. Again, just move very slowly with this technique. For pectoralis major, notice how there was elasticity in the client's pecs. So this is a technique called retrograde. You're actually going to start the technique as far out by the tip of the shoulder as possible, but staying on the pecs. So the idea here is you take the slack out of the skin, and then you apply your pressure with the heel of your hand, and slowly move the tissue superiorly and laterally. You're just kind of pushing this out. Now, if you suspected that your client had internally rotated shoulders, this would be a really great option to use. While you're doing this technique, you could also have the client uh, place their arm in external rotation, meaning their palm would be facing the ceiling, and that would also improve the outcome of this particular technique. And you'll notice I've pushed out away from the center of the body, but each time I pick my hand up and I get closer and closer to the sternum. So with each new technique, I do have to move a greater and greater distance, 
but as the tissue warms up, it will start to move easier and easier. And I just keep coming right across because pecs insert onto that crest of the greater tubercle on the humerus. Another nice way to warm up the pecs, get that area moving, is this is also a type of C-bowing. It's just very different than what we have done elsewhere on the body. So with my inside palm, I'm pinning the pec and then moving the arm up. So when you place your hand on the body, your fingers are at an angle pointing at their hand. As you bring their arm up, the hand on the pec is slowly twisting towards their face. You do move very slowly with this, especially if you have a guy too. A guy may have hair and you'll want to do this very, very slowly. So I pin the tissue with my fingers pointing at their wrist, slowly bring the arm up and twist my hand on the pec. Last technique I'll use for the pec is that pincer grasp. Thumb comes into the axilla or the armpit. Thumbs grasp the whole pec. I pin it, start to pull my hand towards me, and then I bring their arm passively up over their head. So again, grasp it and slowly move the arm up over their head. Very nice way to start to loosen up that pec tissue for your client. So the video that you've just watched, again, focused on the use of dry work and fascia work in your treatment. Again, I would like to stress that it is important to begin working with a part of the body using these very important techniques, both as a way to assess and a way to begin the portion of the treatment. For these and other instructional videos, please visit the SOMA YouTube channel.